Give it up to yourselves for coming out in Istanbul. I'm a, I'm a former stand-up comedian, and I often start my talks saying give it up to yourselves because as a co comedian, you may not get any more applause the rest of the show. So you may as well start off on a good note. Um, I come to you from Los Angeles, California. I got here last night. Couldn't be more thrilled to be in Istanbul. And uh, my background is I'm a former stand-up comedian, as mentioned. And uh, I struggled with clinical depression while I was performing stand-up. And if you can imagine my bedroom, one-bedroom studio on the East Coast in Washington, D.C., I had dishes stacked up for weeks on end in my kitchen. I had my linens all over the floor, barely making my bed. Uh, I struggled to breathe, and I had beer cans and comedy note cards all over my desk. And what I realized through that experience is, first of all, I'll let you be the judge if I was funny or not. Um, but secondarily, I realized I didn't have to be the star to grow influence, and I could work behind the scenes. And I started a talent, production, and marketing agency for comedians on the East Coast. Um, then my travels led me to Los Angeles, California, where I started running micro, uh, marketing at a company called Machinima.com. It's a big YouTube network for gamers. We were a hungry startup. We were working hard. And we discovered that influencers helped us launch the game Minecraft. Anyone here played Minecraft? Their cousins play it, your nieces, your nephews. It's an addictive game. I apologize for that addiction because our team of influencers, what we found out was this has been a great morning because we talked about how celebrities don't move the needle anymore. And so I studied Kim Kardashian's tweets. Anyone here friends with Kim Kardashian? Sorry, but her tweets are worthless. She actually gets less than a half of a percent. She's like a banner ad for marketing. Right? Who here clicks on banner ads voluntarily? It's normally like, back, back, back. I don't want to touch this thing. Um, how's this side of the room doing? I feel like I just gave them a lot of love. But I want to make sure you guys feel a part of this. Uh, because what we found was the undervalued influencers. The term we use today was micro-influencer. But undervalued, the money ballers. We found that on YouTube, people with 100,000 subscribers, if they had overlapping communities where people were seeing the content more than three times, that was the magic number. If you could see a micro-level influencer and have a stack of those people versus a couple tweets from Kim Kardashian or Ashton Kutcher. You know, I live in LA, everyone wants a quick buck and a celebrity to tweet about their product, and that is the wrong way to go about it. So ultimately, if you can aggregate groups of micro-level influencers and having overlapping audiences, consumers, audience members, community members will see that product or that story again and again and again. So Microsoft ended up getting acquired for $2.5 billion. Uh, Warner Brothers acquired Machinima, the startup where I worked. So when I saw this phenomenon, I had to catalyze it in my book, The Influencer Economy. And ultimately, I realized there's a bartering and exchanging of ideas online. And all of us are trying to reach people and tell their stories. And I interviewed uh, Seth Godin. Anyone read his books on my podcast? He's a prolific author. And he talks about tribes and how tribes are formed through a shared purpose and a way to communicate. But in the new economy online, you need an element of collaboration. You have to work with your audience. You need to make products with them. And most importantly, you need to diversify your revenues. Who here makes money off of Instagram? Does Instagram pay anyone in this room to post? Instagram pays you nothing. Instagram pays you zero money, right? They're incentivizing you to create a habit to use their product so they can make money. So ultimately, with my business, I'm an author, I'm a podcast host, public speaker, consultant, business coach, and I have seven income streams. Uh, it drives my wife crazy. She says, why are you doing all this? But that's what you have to do to stay relevant because your content won't pay you alone. So the future of the creator economy isn't just sitting back, getting a bunch of likes or impressions or vanity metrics like followers. You know, Daniele said earlier today that followers are no definition of influence. Influence is true game changing. It's the ability to take a small idea and seemingly overnight make it seem like a massive success. However, most companies and brands, they struggle because they, they go to influencers too early. They pitch the influencers when they're not ready. Uh, when Wikipedia was first formed, there was a 991 internet rule that 9% of the Wikipedia creators were the editors, 1% of the people were writers, 
and the 90% of us are lurkers. Who here is a lurker? Who here passive? Everyone is. You're lying. Who here is a liar? Better question. Because ultimately, the lurkers are people that passively consume content. So when you build a marketing campaign, whether you're a brand, you're an influencer, you're working with micro-level influencers, you want to collaborate. You want to find that 9% base of people that I call your collaborative class. And I call them your undervalued influencers, the people to build out your proof of concept. Nothing worse than going to pitch an influencer and getting a no, right? When you pitch, who here pitches influencers on a regular basis or presents ideas? Who here thinks that they've had a good success doing that, right? It's because you find that core community, the core base, the core audience, and then you pitch the heavyweights because you don't want zombie tweeters. Who here has seen The Walking Dead? You don't want The Walking Dead zombie tweeters that have no passion around your product. The last group of people we had up here that amazing conversation was about, you want people to love what they wear and you're not forcing people to post. You don't want that obligation. You want people to opt in to the collaboration because nothing worse than feeling pressured like, who here gives elevator pitches? You don't want to feel like your content is like a pitch. You want it to feel like it's a conversation and that you're listening to your community and to your audience. And ultimately, we all need to connect in three ways to be authentic. And that word authentic is like influencer. It's bantied around in the advertising, media, Hollywood industries, right? From Istanbul to, to LA. But, you know, authenticity is when your actions match your words. Actions match words. That's when you back up what you say with what you do. So authenticity comes in three ways. It's through emotion, bringing people into your story. It's through authority, but it's not through authority of like telling everyone I'm a master of this. It's actually creating word of mouth marketing by teaching them something. Creating an authority is word of mouth. Funny story actually, I went to an influencer event in San Diego, California. And uh, this guy was sitting next to me, and I paid 100 bucks. Anyone go to these events, we pay 100 bucks. You meet influential people. And I sat next to this guy, I was like, you know, what are you up to, what do you do? And he says, I make six figures of income. And I was like, oh God, this sounds painful. And I said, I, I had to ask the question, how do you make six figures? He said, I make entrepreneurs that make six figures, seven figures. That, that's like a repellent. That guy's like spraying himself like roach repellent. Like I don't want to be near this guy ever again. But that's not authority. Authority is creating something like if you could leave today and say, Ryan Williams helped me understand influence. Ryan helped me to understand I need to reach the collaborator base. Ryan helps me want to tell a story like a badass. Now, can I swear, by the way? Can I use the word badass? Is that okay? Okay. Should I keep swearing? Um, some people like that. But, uh, and then the third way to connect with people is you solve problems. I call this your, your fixer mentality. So if you go to a brand or you go to an influencer, you need to create a value proposition where you're solving a problem for them. Sometimes that's money, sometimes that's bartering, and sometimes that's begging, right? Because when you're first starting out, you need that opportunity to collaborate, to grow, and have a win-win. Because when you think about your story, that's all that matters. That's all that matters to the brands, to yourselves, and to your community. And when you lose that authenticity, when your actions don't match your words, you lose the followers, you lose the relevancy. And have you seen some of these new movies about American memes where these YouTubers are now going through depression? And that's one of the reasons why I bring up mental health at the beginning when I struggle with my depression, when I was doing stand-up comedy, because getting that saccharin, that sugar high, getting that dopamine rush of a like is thrilling. How many of you are on your phone right now checking your likes? I see you right there. Don't think you can, and you in the back, yeah, I see you with a camera next to you. So how many of you are creating content right now, right? We struggle to live in the present. And so as an influencer, also consider how important it is to decompress. I saw someone at the airport that had a sidekick filming them getting their luggage and getting into their car. And you're bringing people into the story of getting into a taxi cab. For God's sakes, let it be a moment you don't have to share everything. And remember that solving problems for people at the end of the day is how you can truly add value as an influencer and how you can collaborate with a brand and most importantly, your audience. Um, so I'm happy I have slides for this show that I, I did not present today. Uh, that's, I'm matching my shirt today, just so you know, I'm with my glasses. 
Um, but email me, Ryan, at thestorycollab.com, the story, and then collab.com, and I'll send you the slides for this. Um, I'm also giving away a free copy of the book. It's not yet available in Turkey. If you take a photo with me and tag me on Instagram, I will pick a random person. I brought two books uh, to give away to anyone in attendance. And uh, thank you so much. Give yourselves one more round of applause for coming out today. And remember, it's all about the collab, the collab, the collab, the collab, the collab. Thank you, Ryan. Do we have any questions before we go to break here? Because this guy is really a wealth of knowledge. Um, anyone have questions? Do a Q&A. Anyone in the audience, any questions? No, because... Yes. Is that me? Ryan at the, the story collab.com. So the story collab, C O L L A B.com. So I'll send you the slides. Send me a note. Maybe we could take a selfie together. You ready for that? Right no. now? Let's do okay, it. let's go. Can she take a selfie? Is that cool? I mean, I don't want to be exclusive. Hey, give, it, give a shout out at where they could tag you at. At Ryan J. Will. At Ryan. At Ryan J. Will. If you tag him at Ryan J. Will, okay. he might send you a copy of the book. We have a... He's doing a giveaway, folks. At Ryan J. Will. Yeah, All this right. is great. I'm sneaking in. This I'm is, sneaking in this on is this Ru one. Russia hit it, hit to it. America with love. Yeah. You know, we can, we, we can all be friends. You know? Right? We don't want to have animosity, right? I mean, come on. This More than from Russia with love. Who knew that the United Nations would come up today? I mean, yes, give on. a round of applause to Ryan Williams, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very everyone. much.